This is Taco Incidents, where we learn the secrets of breakthrough brand experience from the most brilliant leaders while we're on the search for the perfect taco. Taco stop number seven, brand experience pick me up. I met up with Josh Searle at Mexicali Tacos and Company in Los Angeles. He started a custom soda shop entirely inspired by the idea that every one of us needs a pick me up. I wanted to learn why he believes in the power of brand experience, what he does to create it, and how it's helped him thrive. All over tacos. It really doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, when I first moved here, I'm like, I gotta find great tacos. Is this the chain, by the way? No, it's the only it's one. It's the only owner. So do, you know started... anything, do you know anything about the owners? Yeah. Yeah, Esdras is a great friend. Ever since I started coming here, and I, I, when I first moved here, I started well, doing five years ago, like, like five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So besides this taco, what else is worth it on the, on the menu? Or is this the only thing you've been? You've tried no, the other order? thing that I normally get, if I'm, if it's like I'm hungry, I'll get the I'll, I'll get the vampiro al pastor, mm -hmm. and then I'll get the cachetada, which is the slap in the Do face. Do they have English words for this? Because like I'm gonna come back and be like, I have no, no you know, idea what I ordered. Pictures. Oh no, they bought the picture book. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> the cachetada is the, is, is the tostada with um, with like either I either get it with carne asada or chicken grilled chicken, mm -hmm. delicious. It's they call it cachetada is a slap in the face. So it's called it's slap a, in the yeah, face. Yeah. So if I walk up there and say I want a slap in the I face, she's so like, okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or would they like slap me in the face? <laughs> huh, interesting. I mean, this is it's so great to be here mm -hmm. and uh, first of all introduce you to some amazing tacos yeah, that are just down the street from where you're living and so you can obviously come back as much as you want um but i want to i'm really excited to hear about you and what it is that you do with like what like your journey with pick me up and it's been several years now it's been two and years so this is this is like a newer entrepreneurial journey for you. Well, yeah. So basically, so my what's the background? So, so my what, so my entire background with like with my career was you know construction construction management, the economy tank. Went back, got my CPA license. Did that for a few years. Went through a merger, and during that merger process, my job got eliminated. So there's because within the hour of like that notice, like hey, your jobs are being terminated. You know, I decided, do I go look for another job, or am I going to do the entrepreneur route? Within the hour, I was like, entrepreneur. And how it all came about was, so I had my business, my, one of my coworkers, Peter, one of my, my buddies there, he, he does branding, and so I approached him and said, hey, can I hire you to, to figure out my branding for the, the soda shop, and it's going to be called uh, Pick Me Up. So brought him in, so we both opened up Pick Me Up together, and we wanted to make sure it wasn't just an experience where someone orders a soda, orders a cookie, and leaves. Because, I mean, frankly, anybody can sell a soda. The barrier to entry is super easy. We want to make sure when people came, they were literally having a pick-me-up experience. Mm. And so I remember during, you know, I got a dry, uh, uh, dry eraser board, and I wrote out, like, everything what that looks like. So when a customer, from where the customer pulls up. The whole journey. Well, the whole thing. Okay. From order, pick up, leave. And then even for, like, right, how do I motivate my employees? Like, what's going through their process? How long are they working there to pick me up? How, how does the experience of pick me up, you know, transform to their next career? Because, I mean, honestly, you know, we're, we're hiring, like, high school kids, college kids. They're not going to be, you know, working at soda shop for, like, the next, like, 15 years. We want to make sure that they're training for their next step. So was, all that was being incorporated to how we, you know, yeah. set up pick me up and the customer experience. It was Tuesday morning when we got, you know, when yeah. all 150 of us got terminated to the merger. And so, you know, we all go home, you know, we took the day off and, you know, we're all texting each other and someone had said, hey, we're all going to go down and get, and get drinks or whatever and get some food. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I could use a picnic right now. That's where that term came from. It was interesting because, I, you know, as Peter and I were working on the branding, we, we had some other names pop up for the soda shop. Maybe not pick me up, maybe some other names. And I ran them by some of, some of these, you know, some, some women who were definitely going to be our, our demographic choice. And they're like, absolutely not. Like, it has to be pick me up. So saying, like, I, I don't want to say to my, to my friends or my girlfriends, you know, I'm going to this place. Like, I want to say I'm going to get a pick me up. Why did why do you care about creating something that well, is literally a pick me, pick -me up, up for people as opposed to 
just a great soda shop. Well, so, you know, I think a lot of, for me, it's just my own personal experiences, you know, having not, not necessarily like a difficult life, but, you know, having like going through my mother's suicide and other things where you realize like life's hard, but we're interacting with people every day. And how do we interact with people where, you know, we're, we're adding value to the world? And so as I was, you know, thinking about like coming to pick me up or, you know, you know the branding for it, realizing that it cannot be transactional. And, you know, each individual person has the, the ability to, you know, lift people's spirits, you know, add value, you know, in that, in that interaction. Mm. And, and so the hard part for us has been even like, you know, as I have taken my own experiences and putting it into pick me up is like getting my employees to catch that vision. Because mm. you, can, you can train anyone to like make a soda, you can train them to like different tasks. Do the stuff. Yeah, yeah. but it's a, a completely different animal when you're trying to help, help them develop their empathy skills. Mm. You know, because I tell my employees, like, the, like, they're not allowed to say, hey, welcome to pick me up, can I take your order? I'm like, that's one of the worst things you could say to someone. Like, when, they, when our customers pull up, hopefully they've come enough where we know their first name, but we're, we're, we're conversing with them. And mm -hmm. so, like, we don't, we don't hire baristas, we don't hire mixologists, we hire conversational specialists. Right, so, yeah, I want to talk and, to you about that, because that's... And it's super so, unique. Well, it is, especially yeah. for high school kids, because, you know, in our training and what I'm trying to instill with them, it can be intimidating for, like, you know, a 17-year-old kid to have a conversation with a 50-year-old lawyer, you know, or whoever's coming sure. through. Yeah. And so when they see, like, my interaction, like, so basically the tone that I set as, as, as the, the, the owner, you know, and helping them see that, you know, it's okay to joke around, it's okay to, like, sometimes laugh or cry with sure. our customers. And basically, so it gives them the permission to kind of experiment with yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, one, as I was coaching one of my employees, he was like, I was surprised you complimented the man on his truck. And I was like, why not? Like, he had like, he had like a badass truck. It was like, <laughs> Jack, I think, because the guy pulled up, I was like, someday I hope to make what you make so I can, I can afford the truck you make. You know, when we talk. But it's just little things like that. It's rather like than broke being down like, this barrier and oh, you're absolutely. like human. How do you negotiate that where, like you said, you want to connect on a meaningful level with your customers, um, but you also need to be concerned about well, profitability. Well, and so to answer your question about like, how do you manage that time system? I guess the first point is most, most customers, you know, are aware enough to be like, oh, there's like 10 cars behind me. Like I can't like, you know, have this like 10 minute conversation. conversation yeah. So we have a three point system where, you know, we have someone walking the line, taking the order. And that's our best opportunity to actually chew the fat with the customer. First point is how they're uh, taking their order on the iPad. Second point is when they, when they come around, we give them their cookies. And then the third point is when they actually like, we actually hand out the product. Yeah. And then the final way is when we, when we say goodbye. And what I call, it's called um, power in the pause. Yeah, I want to ask you. Power in the pause is, again, you're, you're serving like you know, so many customers through in, in an hour. And that last, touch point is when we can finally like really like have this like intimate moment and you know we've taken the cup we've cleaned it off we handed them all out and then what we train our employees to do is we actually we put our hands on the windowsill to show that we're fully facing the, the, the customer focused engaged, focused, yep. yeah and we get their attention and then we pause whether it's like hey guys you know we, we, we get down get down the window like yeah, yeah. lean out and we pause because you know too many times you know I'm sure you've been through a drive through experience, and they like, all right, guys, like, they hand your drink, have a good day, and they close the window as you're driving, you know. But to really, like, where you stop to get their attention, you lean out the window, like, it causes everyone in the car to be like, wait a minute, like, what's going on here? And then we say, again, some type of phrase, like, drive like a bat out of hell, hope you have a great day. But again, it's just that final little, usually they say, it, it catches them off guard, and they remember that. So is it, it, it the pause catch them up, or it's the whole package? It's the whole package. Yeah. It's getting their attention. But that pause, I mean, in human or interaction, even, it even works when you give someone a compliment. So, for example, you're giving a compliment to one of your, one of your coworkers, like, hey, Mike, you did a great, great job today. But you can say, hey, Mike, you did a great job today. So even that, like, microsecond. Just that, well, yeah, just, the psychology behind it. When you give it that microsecond pause, people, they focus more. And they're going to remember that rather than just, like, run on sentence. Yeah. And so yeah, it really does make a difference in the car, um, say, where we stop, put our hands. Because, you know, we've had, like, again, train our, our employees to be like, we're not allowed to multitask when we're saying goodbye. 
Because there's too many times, like, they're still talking, trying to, like, no, 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 we have to, when we're yeah. saying goodbye, hands, hands, they see our hands, we're fully focused, no multitasking. And yet it adds, like, maybe two seconds to them, to them saying goodbye. Customers remember that. And yeah. so, like, we were able to, you know, create this, like, solid following of customers yeah, yeah. come back every time. You know, but and it's interesting because if you were able to ask our customers, like, what makes picking up different, they wouldn't say, like, oh, it's power of the pause. Like, they get my attention, they give that hard pause. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to put their finger on it. But they could say, like, you know, it's just, I feel it when I go there. Mm -hmm. All the crafting, it's all very deliberate. I mean, this is your thing. This is, you, you, well, you like, it gets us you, unique too, and again in the drive-through is designed everything very specifically. Yes. With the customer in well, mind. Well, I guess I guess even like how we designed it. <clears throat> so we specifically designed our little. I mean, my building is like ten feet by twelve feet. Small. Like smaller than like your standard master bathroom. Yeah. And we have a Coke machine, a Pepsi machine. <laughs> we have a two hundred fifty gallon water. I mean, we are packed in there. Yeah. But the thing is nice is we wanted to be able to fill up drinks and talk to the customer at the same time. And so it's great because we're talking to the customer, we're doing, doing their drink, and there's always these conversations going on. Because again, it's, and, and it's not just like, you know, we've had people where we're crying with them, laughing with them, and it's interesting. So, you know, I felt like we were kind of missing the mark on our customer experience, so I, I brought in a consultant. I said, hey, will you come in and do an early morning training with my team? And they had worked at some of these other like larger chain stores that had been known for customer experience. And this consultant said, you know what, you guys need to be like super positive and just fun and full of energy. And she gave us all these examples. And I just sat there and I watched my team's, you know, response to this consultant that we brought in. And after she left, I was like, all right, guys, like, so what did you think of this? And they're like, we don't feel good about any of it. And I was like, thank you. Because I feel like in so much in customer experience, we feel like we need people to be like upbeat, positive. I was like, no, I want you guys to be yourself. Because there are some customers come through, the last thing they want is some bubbly like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be like, you know. And so we try to have, we hire people who can connect with their personality. So they don't necessarily have to be the, the biggest like extrovert, off the wall crazy fun, but can they read people's energy and connect? Mm -hmm. And most of the time I hear about these experiences through social media, people respond back, said, hey, I went to pick me up today, this is what happened. Yeah. So one woman had shared that she was having a really hard day. She was trying not to cry. She went through our drive through and she says, your employee, you know, I think she, she must have sensed I was having a bad day and I went to pay. She said, don't worry, it's on the house today. She's like, I drove home and I cried. I was like, it was like the best thing. And so, you know, I found out who it was. She's like, so I talked to my employees. I'm like, uh, yeah, to, to my employees. I said, how'd you guys know she's about to cry? She's like, I just kind of sense that she was kind of having a bad day, so I didn't charge her. I was like, that's it. Like, that's how we, oh, well, yeah, she was a screen house. Or, you know, I remember we had this, um, the, the, high, the, the soccer mom was driving, was, you know, she had her, these four daughter, four girls in the back seat, and, and they all looked like, like junior high age. And so anyways, you know, I gave them their drinks to get that power in the pot, and you get down the and I was like, wait a minute, like, what are you guys all doing now, like, getting drinks today? And the mom, like, looks in the back seat, and she's like, these four girls, like, they all ran for student, they all ran for student government, and they all lost. And I was like, I ran for student government and I lost. I was like, it totally sucks. And they're like, the girl in the back, like, she's crying. She's like, she's like in tears. <laughs> I was like, hold on. So I go back and I grab like four cookies. Like, here's some extra cookies for you guys. Like, it totally sucks. And I know it's like that little experience, like, spread. The people are like, oh my gosh, you're about that picking up guy. Like, they gave him like free drink, you know, free cookies for those girls who lost their student. And so it's like trying to, you know, through my own example, but also with my like employees, like it's okay to like be real with our customers. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that totally happened to me. Yeah. It totally sucks. I think that that's like, I mean, that's such a tribute to what you've created in the sense that I mean, multiple angles there. Like the fact that your your team member felt empowered to like recognize that some, first of all that they were able to recognize that someone was yeah. maybe having a bad day didn't even address it. It's like, oh, you look like you're having a bad day, which also could be really awkward, but just sensed it and then was empowered to actually, oh, yeah. like you've obviously trained them and set up this culture of, hey, someone, if, like feel free to like delight and surprise our customers oh, yeah. with whatever, whatever they need. Give them cookies when they lose student council. You know, uh, if they're having a bad day, comp them their soda. I think that there's a there's a tremendous power in that because you you're what you're doing is you're acknowledging 
the humanity mm -hmm. of someone on the other end. Yeah. And I think that that's what's, there's so much of that missing in all of the thousands mm -hmm. of customer interactions that we have every day. People are just, you know, they're looking at each other as transaction mm -hmm. instead of this opportunity to connect. And so... Well, the thing, the thing that makes Pickup unique, like for example, let's say if I was to like take my business, my this customer experience and take it to McDonald's, it'd be more difficult at McDonald's because McDonald's, like again, it's, it's a volumes game and where they, they're talking through the microphone, you drive forward, they swipe your card, I mean, they get you in and out so fast, McDonald's. You know, and I mean, we're not—we can't be that fast, you know, in our current current setup. But how we've designed the customer experience, where again, someone takes your order, we're interacting with them for the first, you know, 15, 20 seconds about their day, when they we hand them their order, you know, and we say, and even when we're making the drink, so we have a lot of touch points that really add to that customer experience. Yeah. And, and I mean, you and I have had lots of conversations about how important that like high level, uh, well-designed customer and brand experience mm -hmm. is. Um, why do you think that most, like the vast majority of people don't get it? Like, like businesses? What, yeah. Businesses, leaders, what is it that, <laughs> why, why is there this huge gap when, when, when you see results like you're talking about, you guys have grown and been wildly <laughs> successful. I got a funny story. Okay. So, you know, I had a, a local business reached out to me for, for some advice on their social media campaigns. And so, you know, I sat down with them, he pulled up their Facebook account, and I said, well, let me go and look through your reviews. He's like, oh, we don't do reviews anymore. I turned those off. And I was like, those are those to be kind of powerful. And so he showed me what had happened was, customer went through, through his, his, his food, food establishment and didn't like the experience. They went on to their Facebook and gave them a one-star review. So the business owner gets on, gets on the face, Facebook and says, hey, I understand my employees make mistakes, but really a one-star question mark? And I, <laughs> so, oh yeah, it just gets ugly. And so this customer and this, bit and this owner just go back and forth oh, no. on, the, on the public, public page. Banter. Oh yeah. Right. And so finally he, he ended it with some like snide remark. And so this woman within like 24 hours had like 40 friends go on his Facebook. Skewer. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, it's not a lie, which is completely up, wrong, unethical, unethical. Course, absolutely. Yeah. You know, but again, the, this, this business owner said like, you know, I will never let a customer take advantage of me. And I'm like, you know what, you screwed up. Like you, some, I mean, lack for a better word, like kiss the customer's butt, but I was like, you can't recover from that. And it's amazing how that experience for him like spread like wildfire. Yeah. I was like, had, had it been a completely different, if you said, oh my gosh, I am so sorry of that experience, come back, we'll make it right. Or even like, you know, let me give you coupons, you give credit to my competitor to you. Like, do whatever you can to save, yeah, to like yeah. make things better rather than like, anyway, so. Well, I remember, so a couple, it was probably a couple of months ago, we got, I got this notification on a Friday night, we got a one star Yelp review for, for churros mm -hmm. in, in Utah. I was like, I'm like having a heart attack. Like, what? what? You know, I was like, like panic. panic. No. I know. I was like, what? Oh no! What went wrong? Which things go wrong, you yeah. know? Like you have to acknowledge that that's a reality. And so I read it, and he and he says, you know, I I had um, we went out of our way to go there. It took half an hour for us to get there. Went with the whole family. We've heard so many great things. Blah blah blah. And we got there and. Your team member was late, and then the oil wasn't heating up properly, and so then we had to wait up even extra long, and then we got them, and they weren't really that good because they were the first batch or whatever. Anyway, so, so like, just terrible. And I'm like, ah! So I responded right there. I'm like, I am so sorry. This is not a yeah. normal practice. We, you know, we're, we're normally there ahead of time. I'm so sorry that you went out of your way. I'm so sorry that churros weren't great. I'm so sorry that, well, yeah. I just stumbling over myself, apologizing, and I'm like, please give us a chance to make it right. Like, what can I do? I'll take you churros right now. Where are you at home? I'll bring you churros right now. Um, or whatever, like, because he expressed that he's like, we just really needed a churro <laughs> in this moment, yeah. you know? So, so how did you fix it he, So he wrote back, back and forth, I was an hour away, and I'm like, I'll bring you churros. They may not be the hottest, most, like, ideal, optimal churros, but I will make them myself, and they're gonna be great. So. So just hang on there, or hang in there, and I'll be there. So I took him the churros. Sure enough, went to their home, took him the churros, 
had the greatest conversation with these guys. He's also an entrepreneur. Yeah. Actually, at the soda shop, <laughs> ironically <laughs> enough. And and uh, and he's like, you know, I get it. I don't know. It was just a, I get it. Things go wrong. Yeah. Like you have bad moments, and uh, I really appreciate you going the extra mile to come and bring yeah. me here. So as I'm, you know, we had honestly, I was there for like half an hour talking. Yeah. They're just great people. I got in my car, and as I was driving away. I got the notification, and he had taken down his one star and posted a five star. Oh, good. You know? Yeah. And now, is that going to happen every time? I've also done that with other, with, like, we have a couple yeah. of other one star reviews where things have gone wrong, and I've responded in similar ways. And it doesn't always, there's no, not always a happy yeah. ending, yeah. you know? Um, but the, your point is well taken. It's just, you, you, you have to. You have to realize that that there is another human being on the line, mm -hmm. on the other side, yeah. that they have opinions, they are welcome to express them, and we just have to empathize and do our best to right the wrong. Like if it was wrong, accept that it was wrong, and and do what you can to, mm -hmm. to remedy it. You're you're also a numbers guy, results driven. How yes. in the world does this translate to business results? I mean, because oftentimes, I mean, this is bit extra money, it's extra effort, you're, you're, you're training your team, you're setting up expectations, all of this is, it could feel, from a business leader's perspective, like it's extra stuff. How do well, you do just, with that? Well, just, yeah. it goes back to the common mantra of that it costs, it costs more, you know, it costs more to acquire a new customer than to, to keep a customer, right? Yeah. And so, even though it may take a little bit more time, I mean, that's where we make our money. And that's, you know, it's not, you know, a customer who comes once a year, yeah. it's our customers who come three or four times a week. And they come because we know their name, or, you know, we have, we have our, our security cameras, and so our team can see the cars pulling up. And they see like, oh, it's so-and-so, pull out that drink phone, and they have it. So when they pull up like, hey, hey, Mark, we have your, we have your Diet Mountain Dew, sugar-free coconut, lime right here ready for you. And they're just like, I love it. I, I know that, wow is important to you. The wow factor. Yeah. Go, keep going. <laughs> I didn't know this. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know, that was called. I don't know about our past conversations we've had, but go ahead. No, I want, I, like, what examples do you have of wow where you guys have gone above and beyond to surprise and delight and, and where, where someone's just been wow. I think the, the most time we've been wowed is when we show up to people's homes. We have a, a box of blank, uh, envelopes, like uh, not apology letters, not just like like they're blank thank you cards. They don't say anything. It's just blank cards. So whenever we have a bad customer experience, you know what I do is I screenshot it because usually I hear about it through social media. I screenshot it and I send it to the to my team who was working. Say, hey, we just got this. I need you to write an apology letter to the customer. Throw two gift cards in there. And then, and, then I, and then I make them like, you know, screenshot the, or take a picture of the letter to make sure it looks good, it sounds good. And then once that's done, then I mention the employee. Mm. The customer back said, hey, we are so sorry. Come back tomorrow, ask for your name, like a card with your name. Yeah. That has been huge. Huh. It seems like if you, if, you can, if you can develop internal culture that values those sorts of things, mm -hmm. and then that helps inform all of your decisions, whether when you're hiring, when you're designing physical spaces, yeah. when you're when you're designing your, you know, your job descriptions, mm -hmm. um, your trainings, everything like that, it could really have a tr tremendous impact on, on like the type and quality of experience that you're creating for customers. Yeah. Um, before I get to the last question, I, I wanna, I remember when uh, you got laid off from glasses mm -hmm. and I also remember what happened very shortly after that. Uh, you had this giant box of candy from Costco. Oh, Bags of yes, candy. Yes, 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 yes. And a forgot stack about that. of thank you notes. For the people who are taking my job, basically. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Know, Tell crazy. me about this. Yeah, so here it was, you know, I was, we were a small company. We were acquired by a behemoth company. So basically, like, my job was now being, like, splintered up to like different parts of the organization. But these were people who I had worked with for two years. And so anyways, yeah, I bought um, two 
hundred, no, so two 50 pound boxes. So I was, so I mailed a hundred pounds of can, like candies and stuff. But basically anyone who I'd worked with, with that organization for the past two years, I, I sent them a handwritten thank you card, said, hey, have this candy or whatever. Um, yeah, that's what I did. But what's that all about? Like, why did you do that? You were just laid off. They're taking your job. I know. I what know. is this all take, about? They're taking my job. Like, what? Right, what, right, what right, 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 right. One thing. So the people who are now taking my job, like my job's now getting dispersed throughout the organization, they were not the powers to be. I mean, they're trying to support their own families and everything else. So, like, they're not to blame. Um, but I had worked with them for the past two years. So I had a relationship with them. And I did enjoy working with them. And so, yeah, like... Even though, like, it was through a merger, my job's getting eliminated, like, I felt like I not owed them, but, like, I wanted to say, hey, I appreciated the friendships we created working together for two years. Yeah, and so I tried, rather than send them, like, a mass email, thanks, guys, it's been real, catch on the flip side. It was like, no, like... Which is standard. Yeah, it was like, hey, Janet, thank you for, like, I, screw I remember I was screwing up this report, I'm sorry, thanks for, you know, just all those things, and... Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I sent that box, yeah, I kind of like word got out like, oh my gosh, that guy like, you know, we can do that merger. Like, oh, like this is awesome. Because again, like, and I know then too that those people who got those thank you cards, those, you know, two, you know, 100 pounds of candy, like, they'll remember that. I mean, I think that more than anything else, it talks to your character and the type of, type of person that you want to be and how you, how much you value human interaction and, and connection and uh, and really want to make sure that people feel appreciated that they're a part of your life. What is one thing now that you would recommend to any business owner uh, that may feel like creating this level that you just described of customer experience seems like pretty overwhelming? You know, it's like, oh gosh, this and this and all these pieces and I got to do this and change this and train on this and now do this. It may seem a little bit much for a lot of people. But they may want and have this desire to make a difference in people's life, to leave a lasting legacy of positivity and goodness. They may want to dial up their customer and brand experience just a bit. Yeah. So what would be the one thing that you would suggest that they do even now, like in the next 24 hours? I think from my perspective, the number one, it starts with me. Hmm. You know, when I was first opening and like things would go wrong or problems, it might, you know, like anger was my first, like, how did this happen? Like, and you know, I had to go through this process of, process of like, okay, stop. First, like, was the employee properly trained? Were there systems in place? Like, did I, I mean, rather than me like, and so many times it was stuff that I had failed to do as the leader, as the, the manager. Look inward. And so, you know, as, as I again go through like different, you know, business like fast food establishments, I interact, and I have a kind of a bad experience. I often my my now based on the experience I have now, my first thought is, I wonder what the business owner is like here. Because that, uh, that it's a reflection oh, on absolutely. him or her. Absolutely. Yeah, and I love like you know when I travel and I and, and I and I'm gone for like you know for a few days or for a few weeks and I come back and when my employees say like oh my gosh Josh I'm so glad you're back like we've missed you so much like, we just love your energy because yeah like yeah exactly it's your how your employees interact with customers is a reflection of like how I interact with my with with my employees how they see me interact with customers. Um, they follow your lead. Yeah, I, I don't treat my customers and my employees differently, per se. Like, if I'm laughing and teasing with my customers, I do the same thing with my employees. I love it. I, I think that you have shared some examples that, that are not only easily, uh, like, approachable and for someone that is at any stage of a business to say, okay, you know, there's some really super interesting nuggets here that I could apply in my area of influence right now. Yeah. I love it. Special thanks to our host, Mexicali Tacos and Company, for creating the ideal place for us to talk about brand and customer experience. There's a reason they've won Best Taco in all of Los Angeles multiple times. My great friend and top chef, Ezra Sochoa, is a taco genius. Everyone needs to try one of his signature tacos. That Vampiro al Pastor with its secret garlic sauce and pineapple is absolutely drop the mic good. Join our epic taco journey on our website. 
You're not going to want to miss out on the national taco tour we're planning when we launch the book, The Search for the Perfect Taco. So follow us on social media, subscribe to our channel, and tune in to another episode of Taco Incidents, where we'll continue to explore the secrets to level up your brand experience and your taco game. Okay, just throwing this in here. El pilon. So we've got cheese. Cheese. Pork. Oh, that's pineapple. pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you got more pineapple than I did. No, I think it's because you just flipped upside down. <laughs> I, I know, I think but you, I, I think, no, I see you have plenty okay, pineapple. Okay, so there's... <laughs> hey, I don't know, I was winking at it a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, and Great. then I so strongly recommend I know this is like, this is really important because this is like one of the best taco places in LA. Now, is this going to be spicy? Uh, I don't think, no. Okay. I don't think so, it's spicy. Right, so Maybe you can add extra spice if you want, but you've got, we, if you want to put guac on it, I highly recommend that. I would highly recommend liming it significantly. So this taco right here won like best taco in LA for a couple of years. <laughs>